Only about two and a half years ago, I started using social media. I used to use YouTube, correct. It's a good way of learning. However, using social media, where you interact with people all the time, I only started about two and a half years ago. And the only app I ever used was Facebook. Never more than that. Not Instagram, no Snapchat. When I first wanted to go on Facebook, it was only for one reason. People kept telling me, what are you doing? You've got to get with the times and use it for da'wah. People are on, on there. You've got to go on there. Because that's where people read and see. And you, got, you can do your lectures on there and all that stuff. So I thought, well, this is a good platform for da'wah. And I was convinced. But one friend of mine, who is sassy and is all, all, all this stuff, sassy, sassy, savvy, he's really good at it. Yeah, it makes you sassy later on. So he's savvy with it. And he says to me, be very careful. If you're going to go on it, you make a, a time in the day that you check, uh, you know, you check it. That's it. But you've got to really commit to it. You've got to be a man about it. Be a man. Only from this time to that time. And if you're going to have any friends, have only close family. Unless you're going to give da'wah, then make it public. That's fine. So I went really for, you know, forward and I said, I can do that. Yeah, in the beginning you can do that. Then I saw my sister. She's very good at uh, with, with all this stuff, of course, because she's much younger than me. And I said, what should I watch out for? Before I go into it, you've got to watch out. What are you doing? What are you going to you know, um, put yourself into? And she says to me, that's okay. You can always look at you know, post your stuff and see some comments and reply if you want for da'wah, but just avoid one place. Avoid the news feed. News feed people put nonsense stuff about their lives and feeling sorry for themselves. Make themselves whatever, and you just keep scrolling and you never, you never stop. So I said, good. News feed, forget it. I'm not going there. That bar on the left side, news feed, I never went there. So alhamdulillah, I went like that. Started making specific time in the day, didn't touch the news feed. But it doesn't stop there. The shaitan comes to you and says, have a look. Have a look at the news feed. Why should I have a look at the news feed, ya shaitan? The shaitan says to me, well, because you're going to give da'wah to the people. You need to know how they think, what they're talking about, so that when you talk about the deen, you know to be relevant. And this is what Allah says, Shaykh and I were talking about it, that the shaitan said to Allah when he said, I'm going to lead them all astray, he says, that I'm going to sit awaiting for them on your straight path. I'm going to go into their religion. I'm going to, I'm going to make them sheikhs. I'm going to make them da'is, but then I'm going to be shifty around. I remembered that verse and I thought I can handle it because I'm sincere. So I looked at the news feed and I did learn a lot about the people. And my topic started to change. My lectures started to change. How I addressed my students at school also changed. And it was very effective. Subhanallah, as humans... We start getting into this problem. We get deeper and deeper and we don't know how to swim back. Right? When, you, when I had spare time, I would look at the news feed. Right? When I felt a bit down, I look at the news feed. Right? Sometimes I put a post. At times it got a little bit emotional. And I felt tempted to put something about myself and get some friends to say, Oh, we feel sorry. Send me one of those teary emojis. You know the teary one? So I liked it. Looked at it and I started enjoying this stuff. This is me, Sheikh. And I thought I would never get into this until it came a time, and I have to admit, wallahi, because we're the same, okay? I'm not any different, Sheikh's not any different, we're all human beings. And I, got, I started getting too, too deep into it, just scrolling and scrolling. I started to remember nursery rhymes when I was a kid. Round and round he goes, where he stops, no one knows. What am I looking for? Even I don't know. It became like that. You just keep scrolling and scrolling. What are you looking for? I don't know. When will you stop? Mm -hmm. And then you start doubting yourself. So this is what happened to me. And then alhamdulillah, in the nick of time, I started to work on myself. 4.4 billion people are internet users. Wow. 3.9 billion people are active on social media. So 4.4 use the internet. But 3.9, which is the largest chunk, use social media. 45% of the total world population, therefore, or close to 50%, half the world population use social media. That makes 366 million new people who started using social media in the past year, which makes it about a million uh, new people joining social media every single day. That's between 2018 and 2019. One million people joining social media in the past year. 
that makes two point, and I found that 2.5 billion people are on Facebook alone. So Facebook's the highest, you know, number of people who join. And then you've got all these other apps. You know who, you know which ones they are. Now there's this one called what is it called? TikTok. Is it what? TikTok? TikTok, and I don't know what else. So these are my students telling me this TikTok. My daughter comes up and she's 11 years old and says, "Bobo, not TikTok." I said, "Why not TikTok?" She said, "People show very bad things, Bobo, and I will never go on it because I know that this will make me addicted and will teach me bad things, and I will not do it." I thought, "Masha Allah, that's amazing." And I realized from a young age, you've got to teach it. From a young age, put instill it into their heads because that's when their brains are developing and they can develop on that. And they have a stronger ability to resist and be resilient as they get older. The good side of social media is something which I call a miracle of the 21st century. I think it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we've got to recognize which ones are from Allah and use it and benefit ourselves and other people from it. And then there's the shaitan side. Everything we do, there's always what Allah loves about it and what the shaitan has. Um, hates about it. So what is good about social media? Well, listen to this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-mu'minu alladhi yukhalitu al-nas wa yasbir ala adhahum a'zamu wa khayrun min al-mu'min alladhi la yukhalitu al-nas wa la yasbir ala adhahum. Hadith is sahih. He said, the believer, and he's the key, the believer. It means a person who is sincere and has proper goals and proper intentions. Really for the sake of Allah, he or she is doing it who mixes with the people and is patient and persevering and resilient with the harm that comes from them as a result of mixing with the people and giving them da'wah, like teaching them about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and what He has sent the messengers for. So giving da'wah and being patient when mixing with the people in giving that da'wah is much more better and greater to Allah than a believer, again you're still a believer, who sits back and does not mix with the people and does not need to be patient with any of their harm and their words. And I believe that today in the 21st century, social media is the greatest place for da'wah. The greatest place. It's amazing. It's probably one of the best. Brothers and sisters, the good stuff about social media is learning online. You can learn amazing things online. And you can teach other people online amazing things. Using it for education is brilliant. Success and opportunities online are spectacular. Spreading awareness or campaigning for change. That's something that is, wallahi, what I think is a 21st century miracle. That you can make changes in the world through social media. For the better or for the worse, of course. Connecting with family and close friends and keeping your ties with your relatives, especially if they're overseas or people you don't see too often or too busy. That's a good thing. That's a beautiful thing. Sometimes we make a WhatsApp group or another group where siblings are on there, right, brothers and sisters. And we talk and we exchange, we laugh. We know that we're not alone. We've got someone there for our support. Beautiful. Halal entertainment. Halal entertainment is fine. Sometimes we need to mellow out a little. You can use social media for a bit of halal entertainment. Halal. There is Ibn Qayyim, uh, we mentioned him before, a great scholar. He says, one of the ways that a believer needs to continue in their worship in life and to do better and to be successful is to sometimes get a little bit of entertainment, halal entertainment. And in those days, he says, I was sitting under a tree and writing my book. He goes, I looked at two men and they were each carrying a heavy log, one on this side, one on the other side. And I knew it was very heavy and they're sweating in the heat. So I found something amazing. They decided to play a game of entertainment. One would say a verse of poetry, make it up on the spot, and the other one has to reply and continue it with the same um, grammar and conditions of the poetry. And they would reply to each other, make each other laugh. And he said, I realized that it released, it took off some of the tiredness and the exhaustion, made them forget about the pain and the heaviness of the log by getting this entertainment. So sometimes a worshiper needs a little bit of that. Even, uh, dare I say, marriage, marriage uh, prospects, talking about marriage, you can use social media to, to get there, but obviously that's a, a sensitive area. There must be boundaries and conditions to doing that. 
So for example, I would say that if somebody is very young and inexperienced, then they need their parents' uh, knowledge and permission to be able to talk to someone for the prospects of marriage, right? They should know about it. And if you are older and, and have experience in life and, and you know, you're quite mature and aware, you can also look on social media for marriage prospects, especially some people who convert to Islam and don't have family to help them. Don't, don't have you know, much of a network in the community. So, brothers and sisters, these are good things in social media, but what are the bad things? Well, the first thing is the addictive behavior. All right, where does everything start? This guy, this great scholar named Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, every single thing in life starts with a thought. And it comes from the environment or desires, your personal desires, or it comes from the shaitan. Let's say it's bad thoughts, right? And then, if you do not repel the bad thought, it evolves in your brain into an idea. Ah, that's a good idea. A thought just always, you, you go to sleep, your thoughts are still working. But then if you turn it into an idea and you don't repel it, then it turns into a plan. If you do not stop the plan and repel the plan, then it turns into an action. Now, if you do not repel the action, this is where the problem is. So, thought repels into an idea, plan, action, habit. Which one's the hardest to stop? Obviously the habit. The earlier you stop, the easier it is not to get to bad habits. Always. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter when a thought turns into these things because it's very difficult to stop the habit. But obviously habits can be reversed as well. The first thing is through repentance. That's where it all starts. But we'll talk about that soon. So I get a thought to join social media. Okay, good. I get an idea, good or bad. I've got to monitor these ideas. I've got to monitor this plan and see in which direction I want to go right from the beginning if you want to make life easier on you.